Hearing, without objection, so ordered. I ask unanimous consent that members not on the subcommittee be permitted to sit with the subcommittee today's hearing and ask questions. Without objection, so ordered. Good morning, and uh, thank you to today's witnesses for joining the subcommittee's hearing today on the state of aviation safety. Recent tragic aviation incidents at home and abroad have shed new light on what is required to ensure the safety of the traveling public. In addition to the integration of new entrants such as drones into the national airspace, uh, they all present new safety and security challenges. Last Congress, this committee passed the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA Reauthorization Act of 2018. Bipartisan legislation which set a solid foundation to improve the safety of the nation's airports, pilots, crew, and passengers. Today's hearing is an opportunity to get to the public's perspective on current risks and challenges facing our aviation system and necessary safety improvements. This testimony will also shape our priorities as we continue our investigation of the Boeing 737 MAX and the oversight of the FAA's implementation of last year's FAA uh, reauthorization bill. Um, for the sake of time, I'm just going to uh, speak first um, about panel two and then shift to the first panel. So later this morning, we're going to hear from the second panel. And this fall, the committee uh, will discuss the implementation of the FAA Reauthorization Act. Uh, so later at today's hearing, the subcommittee will hear from witnesses on that second panel who are on the front lines of aviation and are critical to ensuring the safety of U.S. aviation. Their testimony will help us prioritize issues for oversight on that legislation. So from the NTSB, when they testify about recommendations outlined in the NTSB most wanted list of transportation safety improvements, I particularly want to hear about Part 135 flight ops and ensuring the safe integration of new technologies. As Congress works to improve the pipeline for the next generation of pilots, debate continues on the strong pilot training rules requiring 1,500 hours of flight time mandated after the Colgan crash. Congress cannot undermine our safety rules simply to respond to market forces of supply and demand. If there's a pilot shortage, I am interested in hearing ALPA's thoughts on the ways to address that without sacrificing safety. Flight attendant fatigue is a pressing aviation issue. However, the FAA continues to delay the implementation of a mandate requiring at least 10 consecutive hours of rest for flight attendants during duty, between duty periods. So I want to hear from the Association of Professional Flight Attendants about the immediate and long-term impacts of that inaction. And as evidenced by recent events, the FAA's certification process is critical to aviation safety. So professional aviation safety specialists can shed more light about that role of safety inspectors and engineers in the process and improvements uh, that are necessary to ensure the safety of U.S. aircraft. And last week, Chair DeFazio, Vice Chair Davids, Congressman Davis and Ferguson and I introduced the Fair and Open Skies Act to prevent foreign air carriers from exploiting a flag of convenience to avoid the regulation of their home countries or otherwise undermine labor standards. So when we get to the panel, I would appreciate Transportation Workers Union as well as ALPA and APFA's support of this bill and would, uh, on behalf of the committee, like to hear more about the importance of maintaining strong labor, protection, labor protections on safety. I now want to turn to the first panel. The issue of the 737 MAX is not just about stakeholders in the aviation industry. This committee is a public body and therefore has a responsibility to hear from those most impacted, which unfortunately includes at times of tragedy. And on today's first panel are Mr. Paul Giroge and Mr. Michael Stumo, who both lost family in the Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 or ET 302 crash, which itself claimed the lives of 157 people. Chair DeFazio and I asked Mr. Giroge to testify today on behalf of the ET 302 families and to give a voice to the 157 victims of that tragic accident. Mr. Giroge and Mr. Stumo, I can't imagine the immeasurable grief that you and your families are experiencing. So on behalf of the entire committee, for members here today and for those who can't join us, I want to extend our sincerest condolences to both of you and your families and all the families during this very difficult time. And we appreciate your willingness to come testify in front of our committee. Your testimony is a crucial reminder of the international role the U.S. aviation system operates within. This, these crashes occurred on U.S.-made, U.S.-assembled, U.S.-regulated airplanes. The FAA's actions and this committee's efforts 
clearly have implications for travel around the world. A majority of the victims of ET-302 and Lion Air 610 were not Americans. And therefore, it is only right to hear from someone who can better represent the global community impacted by these tragedies. So I want to thank you, Mr. Giroge, for coming in from Canada last night. Thank you for meeting with us, uh, with Ranking Member Graves and I last night as well, uh, Mr. Stumo as well. And I want to as well recognize um, Tor Stumo, who's here, um, Michael's son my, and uh, Nina's son, Tomra, Vassier is in the audience, and her husband Charles, she lost her brother Matthew as well. And there are, of course, many other family members who are not here, but are certainly represented in our thoughts, our prayers, and in today's testimony. With that, um, I want to uh, turn to the ranking member, Garrett Graves, for uh, opening.